Okay, Cancer, Cancer, save the best for last. I love the Cancers. So what's going on with Cancers in January 2017? What activation? Okay, send this in to the month. The start of the year. Very exciting. New year, new year. Let's see. Okay. Knight of Staffs, Tower reversed, and Four of Staffs. Mmm, interesting, interesting. So, the Tower is like, like, destruction, um, uh, sudden, like, breakdowns of something, but then the Four of Staffs is like, building foundations. So, a lot of times when the Tower comes up, you know, the, like, silver lining out of this, like, gloom and doom, um, card of, like, people falling out of a burning building is that it's an opportunity to rebuild, so it's like you have the opportunity to rebuild right here. Mm -hmm. So what's in Cancer's Thoughts? Cancer's Thoughts. My camera might die. Just to let you know, Three of Wands underneath the Knight of Wands, that is in your thoughts, feelings, like your expansion isn't coming, okay? What's in your resources, your time, your money, your resources, work, job, service, resources, cancer, cancer, cancer. Cancer, Cancer, Cancer. Aww. Hmm. Okay. It's okay, Cancers. You know what? Since I've been reading the other signs, like, you're the last one. There's actually, like, I've had some sweet, like, Cancer stuff in other readings. So... Do not fret. I know this is like heartache. And I'm sorry. I don't want you to be sad. Because I really do love my cancers. Okay. What's the drama? What's the story? It's really not as bad as it might seem. Things are looking up, cancer. Do not fret. Story. 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 Cancer. Eight of chalices. Okay. So, uh, we start with Knight of Wands or Knight of Stabs. It's a fiery energy. Maybe you are, if you're involved with a fire sign, this could be the fire sign. Or if you were involved. And the fire sign is an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. Um, but I feel like this was like... Like, nights to me are always romantic, so I feel like this could be like a, um, like a casual relationship, um, and your thoughts are that it can never expand. So if that's the story, let's start with that story, and then we'll move on to another story. So if this is a casual relationship, and you're thinking like nothing good can ever come of it, perhaps there's been something recently, um, like a fight or a breakup or some distance and separation that has caused you heartache. Um, something has like changed drastically and you're hurting and it's affecting your health and it's affecting your time. Um, but <sighs> this breakdown is an opportunity. The four of staffs is like foundations. So it's funny that like we have 
the tower, which is like foundations crumbling. And when it's upside down, it's like you're having a hard time with the changes. Um, and um, so it feels like everything's getting disrupted, everything's dismantling. But the silver lining of this is the Four of Staves. And the Four of Staves is building foundations. I mean, they're right beside each other. So it's like this destruction needed to happen to present a new opportunity. And so this disrupt in what was going on made way for a new opportunity to present itself for the situation. And the Eight of Chalices, the Eight of Cups, is about walking away from a situation. So you could be like leaving the relationship altogether, which sad day for me, although other readings have <laughs> indicated otherwise, but it can also mean Maybe you're walking away from these thoughts of it can never work out because whenever you have those thoughts and something bad happens, you have heartache. So maybe you're stepping into like a new way of thinking that's like in the more positive end. Um, like instead of going into situations, this is what I'm hoping, instead of like Going into situations with skepticism, and I know like cancers like to protect themselves. They like to, um, you know, make sure everything's super safe um, before they can really like trust. And so they have a tendency sometimes to like want all the um, bad news first, <laughs> like. Um, like, they want all the bad news first so that they can mitigate, um, they can, like, assess the damage, you know, before, um, they can, like, open themselves up to love. And, like, their, um, like, their softies on the inside, hard on the outside, so strong on the outside, but they are softies on the inside. So, I think when you do this sometimes, when you put up this shell then, you know, it's in an effort to protect yourself, but you end up getting heartbroken no matter what. So, the key is to develop things within yourself, develop things within a relationship that have a firm foundation, that have like, like instead of assessing the risks straightforward, we have like the three of wands reversed and then the four of wands upright. So it's like it wants you to move in this direction and it's like three, three, four. So it wants you to move in a direction of kind of thinking like, Try to get a grasp on what you value in the relationships you take on, the relationships that you are afraid will lead to heartache or um, that you're afraid to be vulnerable in. So instead of going in with a risk mentality, try to move towards a like value-based system where instead of like um, red flags and deal breakers move into oh they you know they like their mother they um, you know they uh, firm foundations. So they treat me with respect. They, um, you know, what do you value? So, you know, um, 
instead of the wrist, you can say like, this is an honest person. This is a trustworthy person. Hmm. Okay, so if it isn't a casual thing, staves can mean stories. It might even be your own personal story, like if you're single and not in any sort of um, involvement with anyone. It could be like the story you wanted for your life. Um, and you keep telling this story in your head over and over, saying like, that's not for me, I'm not good enough, that'll never be for me, dreams don't come true that way. And it is this self-preservation of like, having this hard shell and not wanting to get your little like soft underbelly hurt but you are going to get hurt in life no matter what <laughs> so um, if this is like building foundations within yourself then instead of this mentality of um, well I'm cursed um, good things don't happen to people like me um, start looking at situations um, with the idea of, you know, um, I am a strong person. I am a, like, what are, what values make you, um, do you value in yourself? You know, are you an honest person? Are you a trustworthy person? And those are the foundations that you're going to move forward with um, from now on. And it is ultimately going to make you stronger and going to make that hard shell of yours stronger. Um, if you are in a relationship, um, maybe this is like... <laughs> All I can think of is like... Um, like wanting to try something. Cancer, sorry about that. Um, like I was saying, if you're in a relationship, um, sometimes the wands can mean um, sex. So maybe you want to try something new in bed. Um, and maybe um, there's a disrupt that embarrasses you and affects your self-worth. Um, but the thing to move into is um, defining like what you need in bed um, if you're in a relationship so kind of like setting the foundations for um, what you need sexually um, and maybe you've been like hiding fantasies um, and so the goal is to share fantasies so that you don't get heartbroken. Um, wands can also be like creative pursuits. So, you know, maybe you charged into, um, Cancer's are very creative people. Um, a lot of them are like photographers, uh, models, um, I'm trying to think, like, uh, I have a cancer f uh, friend we used to date who um, just got through with an adult coloring book. Isn't that so cool? And then I went to school with one who was, like, super good at editing. So anyway, um, they are very artsy people, so it could be, like, a creative pursuit. But you're saying you're going into it thinking... You know, maybe I don't have the experience with this program. I don't have, um, you know, this degree. I don't have this certification. And then a disrupt breaks your heart um, in hopes for that project. And um, the goal is to maybe get certification. I'm trying to think of like all the things this could mean separate from love, but it does look like love reading. Um, one more thing um, before I get back to love 
Um, the tower sometimes to me means like household. I've been going through some really wonderful but really annoying renovations this year. I'm like living in a cuckoo clock where there's jackhammers every day and I'm losing my mind. You might hear them bang today. We'll see if they're renovating today. But you know, cancers are um, big on homes. So um, maybe there was like um, trouble in renovations and you are heartbroken that your vision wasn't met but I think like your vision didn't start out on a solid foundation but you know okay I'll get back to love whenever I originally pulled this eight of chalices I was like sad because I do have high hopes for my cancer and I want love for myself and I want love for them and hopefully you know I want it together um, so eight of chalices can mean like you know walking away from a relationship and that's definitely possible um, and usually it'll have like eight cups up here um, and it's something you invest in emotionally and sometimes it'll mean like eight months eight years you know um, like eight uh, increments of time in eight. And it was like, oh, it's been around eight months for us. Ah, he's leaving. But I really see, because these two are together, like this is foundations. And sometimes the four of stabs is like marriage card. Like it's like um, building tent poles in other decks. Um, so like a foundation, you know, and they're celebrating like marriage. So um, it's more of a like commitment card and like getting grounded in your unions. So I think this movement, moving away, is more like moving into this, like taking relationships to the next level. That's a possibility because like you know, maybe a casual relationship was meant as a safeguard to not get hurt, but again, you got hurt anyway. Um, and it's interesting that there's four of wands here, and there's one, two, three, four here. So it's like you started out, and this is you charging in, and you had one wand, but you didn't have these other wands. Maybe because you didn't believe they were possible, or you didn't, um, uh, didn't believe they were possible or I don't know maybe you thought they were like bullshit or something but the direction that it's heading is to pick up these three wands so that so that you have four posts to stand on it's funny because it's like one two three four and then three of swords is one two three and then this tower like a one so it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There's a staff here, but I didn't count it. <laughs> so I think like, look, he's stepping, like he's walking in to this way. So he's walking into a foundation. That's the story I like to bend to my, <laughs> my personal outcome that I want. Let's see what the angels have to say. But... I think what Cancer is dealing with is, like, regardless of if it's a relationship or not, they're building foundations within themselves to, like, go into situations um, with a firmer foundation that's ultimately going to give that the, give them that security that they need. Um, that will keep them from getting hurt. Like, found, good foundations will keep you from heartache because when you set emotional boundaries, you know, people know the rules. And, yeah, I just want to say, I don't, <laughs> I have to say again, please don't hurt. For 
we're stepping into good things, but I don't want my cancers to be hurting. Okay, what do the angels say? Teresa, time out. You've been so busy taking care of everyone else's needs, but now it's time to stop and take care of yourself. That is another, <laughs> another theme of my cancer life. So, um, you know, cancers are the mamas of the zodiac. So sometimes they care for other people and they don't care for themselves. Um, so in my personal situation, I'm trying to give my cancer space so that, you know, so that he doesn't feel like any sort of burden to take care of me because it's just like second nature of cancer to take care of people. and. You know, he's teaching me self-care. So you guys, like, it's important that you have self-care. Um, and if you are a mom, is this a child reading? If you are a mom, then you do need to take time out for yourself. Okay. Teresa says, Dear one, you've been working very hard. You're very tired now, yet you keep pushing yourself to work more, more, more. I am here to firmly and lovingly take your hand and tell you to stop. Cease working for a moment and take a respite. You have certainly earned it, and you will be more efficient and productive after taking this risk. Rest. <sighs> you give so much to others that at times like this you become unbalanced. Your inner child yearns for nurturing, and no one is going to give you that loving care but yourself and the angels. So give yourself permission to take a much-needed time out. Take a nap or go play for a while. Please don't delay this guidance. We assure you that your responsibilities will all be met and you will gather new energy and ideas during your time out. We will also bring you additional earthly help and assist you in delegating work. So this upset may have been also, you know, an opportunity to take care of yourself. But as I was reading that, I got a message that I wanted to share with cancers and that is let others care for you sometimes <laughs> like um, I know you like to care for others and I know you like to like practicing self-care is important for you but like others want to take care of you too because others love you so you know maybe part of this self-care is the receptivity in a partner you know, if you think like, if you're bitter about, well, that's not for me in the past, everything, um, everything ended, it always goes this way, this is why I'm single, this is why I'm alone, this is why I'll never fall in love again. Um, and you put up walls, um, then, you know, people think, well, gosh, I guess they don't want me to take care of them. And I think it continues this bitterness sometimes of, like, like these, like, two cards work in tandem. So, like, the more you go into situations in a, um, well, no one will ever do this for me, you're sending out this vibration of, well, I guess they don't want me to do that for them. So you get heartbreak and it's like, goes back here. Like, it's like self-fulfilling prophecy, you know? So maybe part of this foundation is to um, be receptive to others' care. So let's see what planetary things we got going on. Cancer, Cancer, Cancer. This could be your sun, moon, or rising. It could be a part in your chart that's aspected. Woo! It could be um, the transits that are happening right now. I will put some information about that in the description box below. One more. And then a clack, clack. Pisces, upside down. 
Okay, so I'll read again, Cancers. Thank you for bearing with me. So I got Pisces upside down. So if you are involved with the Pisces, um, this is the shadow end of the Pisces. And if you're involved with a Pisces or you're single, I think this walking away is a breakup or is like letting go of an ex that had the shadow side of that possibly was a Pisces and um, you saw the shadow side of this Pisces. If it's not, um, if you're not involved with the Pisces right now um, and you're single or with like another sign, I think it is like getting over an ex um, who led you to believe like Um, that you'd never fall in love again or left you like bitter about relationships so you're learning to like let go of this um, situation in your life and the shadow side of Pisces is um, Pisces are very sweet loving people um, but, you know, everyone has a bad side to them. And the bad side of Pisces is sometimes they can be fishy. Sometimes, like, they can be a little deceptive. And they'll, like, have these ulterior motives that they are not even clear about. But, like, they can play a lot of, like, emotional games. And... Um, there aren't exactly any clear-cut rules because they go everywhere, you know, they swim, like, everywhere, so there's no rules. Um, and if you think about, like, fishing, um, it's like, you have to use, like, lures to, like, you know, give an illusion to, Pi to the fish, give an illusion to Pisces, so, like, being with a Pisces is, like, a beautiful dream world but it's also sometimes not grounded in reality um and that can lead to everyone's detriment if you don't have an ex who's a pisces if you um are not breaking up with a pisces um if you don't have anyone if you don't know anyone who's pisces or doesn't fit these traits then um maybe you have pisces in your chart and it's like negatively aspected and you should go over that but more shadow ends of Pisces is like I don't know the likelihood but I thought of my uncle was a Pisces and I was thinking of Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love and Pisces can like turn from this like childlike imagination um sweetness and then just like swim away suddenly into this like sometimes they could be morbid sometimes they can be destructive sometimes they can be um like go to really dark places really like lovelorn places um but, uh, yeah, I was thinking of Kurt Cobain and my uncle. My uncle took his life, too. So I wonder if Pisces has a tendency, um, like a suicidal tendency. And in that case, if you're dealing with that in any way, I'm really sorry. That's um, a really hard thing to deal with, um, someone taking their life. Uh, the, con the feelings are really confusing in those situations. Um... And, like, your processes of grief are totally different than if someone dies in a different way. So if that's the case, something disruptive happened, aww, uh, then I'm really sorry about this heartache if that's what happened. I hope not. Um, but whatever disrupt leads to better things. Um, Pisces, sometimes they're annoying and ask, like, a bunch of random questions that's the shadow end um, and sometimes yeah they don't live in reality so 
moving away from Pisces. Whether you are leaving a relationship or taking a relationship to the next level, you're moving into firmer ground, firmer territory, and it's going to be um, territory that it's going to help Cancers feel safe. Cancers need to feel safe. So you're moving out of this like shaky, unpredictable Pisces. What does the map of the oracle say? Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Cancer, cancer, cancer. Tap, 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 tap. Tap. Ooh, that one came out. Well, okay. This was upside down, so we should read it. We shall read it as such. This is so cute. I'm gonna show you guys. Ah, it's adorable. So it's a. It's called Heal the Ouch. It's upside down, so I'll read it upside down. But it's a little raccoon nurse healing a baby fox with a hot bag on his head. Look how sweet that is. Ah, oh, adorable. And what did I tell you about letting others take care of you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need a. Uh, to let the little raccoon help you. Let's see what this says. 38. <sighs> okay. 38. Forgiveness is the healer of the soul. Hmm. So, what is the message? Reverse this card is a message urging you to make amends for any harm you've done to another. Appraise yourself honestly. How have you been selfish, greedy, or inconsiderate of others? Have you harbored resentment toward those who have harmed you in the past? Practice deep and radical forgiveness. In order to be free, to know healing, you must surrender to your old hurts and begin anew. Mm, old hurts, begin anew. <sighs> Forgiving yourself and loving yourself is important too. Be humble and willing to admit to your weaknesses. Know your imperfections of um, know the imperfections of the human personality. Walk tall as you take the path of the shaman, the wise elder who is willing to go into the shadows to bring healing light to old wounds. Chiron, that's the Chiron, the wounded healer. So um, if that um, heal, so you might check Chiron in your chart too. Sometimes with um, like a Pisces aspected Chiron or like a Neptune aspected Chiron, it can deal with addictions, if that means anything to you. But um, I need to, I had an insight. Let me read that again. Sorry guys, be patient with me. Yours is probably going to be the longest of my readings, so lucky cancers, but they're going to have to be patient with me. So, I, like, saw some nuggets in there that were, um, like, spoke to my personal situation and, um, you know, might be helpful to all cancers involved. I tried to tap into the energies of all the cancers I knew. I did not realize I knew so much until I was shuffling. Okay. Forgiving yourself, humble weaknesses, imperfections, old hurts, practice deep radical forgiveness. Yes, okay. So, sometimes cancers can hold some really big and really long grudges. Um, so, it's important to let go of those grudges, especially, like I said, if it's in regards to this Pisces. If it's in regards to heartache. Um... And let go of the grudges, forgive them, forgive yourself because, you know, we often feel guilty um, of our part in things and we're human, you know? And I look at this, I mean, these aren't humans, these are um, a raccoon and a fox, 
but they're taking care of each other and it's like the message I'm getting is like we're human we all have ouchies and if we take care of each other then we all benefit hmm that's sweet and yes don't be so hard on yourself cancer really like forgive yourself too that's really important because if cancers are the mamas of the zodiac you know mothers always feel guilty last time i had a chat with my mom i was like you know a little weepy about my um my personal heartache and so um she like immediately felt guilty that like she wasn't a good enough mother to like wasn't a good enough mother to give me firm foundations she's not a cancer but i'm just thinking of like the mother energy and i just thought like how crazy that was because i felt like it had nothing to do with her and maybe a lot of you cancers feel that way um like this inherent mom guilt of am I doing enough? Am I never? I tutor kids um, for a nonprofit, and so like sometimes as an educator, I um, I feel like I'm never doing enough. So it's hard like nurturing things sometimes. Like never feeling good enough is like a struggle of the mother, but. Like, everyone loves mamas. Like, you guys do so much. And if you're a male, then obviously you're not a mama, but you do take care of people. Um, and you're very strong, very masculine. I'm not, like, knocking any um, cancer males. But you you are, like, tender, caring people. You, like, give us slippers. And you're, like, so hospitable. And... <sighs> sweeties you give like the best hugs and you're just so sweet and tender but you are strong you know but you just have that sweet and tender side so everyone loves you um so don't feel guilty about not being able to do enough because the ones who matter will understand that stuff so for your drama oracle okay cancer the um camera shut off so um um I didn't get a chance to record um I did a Texas Hold'em spread so it was like best five out of seven and what we got was a full house full house that's the best Texas Hold'em hand I've gotten in all these readings so that's good maybe full house means your house will be full and happy um but what's interesting is we had three fours and then there's the four of wands right here. Um, so the um, four of swords is about taking a rest. And remember what Teresa said about taking a time out, taking self-care for yourself. So resting. So that four is important. Um, these are two people. So you could be dealing with um, the... Um, it doesn't have to be exact uh, zodiac sign. It could be like old lover, new lover. Um, but uh, king of clubs or king of wands is an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. King of diamonds or pinnacles is a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, could be like one person on a cusp. It's your story, Cancer. But in any case, maybe all three of these are like exes you need to release. Um, but in any case, we have four fours. And the four of cups is about being sulky. Like, it's like your grass is, like your pasture and your grass is like lush and green, but it's just not good enough for you. <laughs> and then... Um, the four of pentacles or the four of diamonds is like being stingy, like holding on to your money. So I'm going to draw some cards to clarify that. But what I was thinking during the, um, 
like as I realized that the camera shut off and recording again, I was thinking that, you know, this Pisces or this X that you might be trying to um, I mean, it could even be like an ex from a long time ago that you thought you were over, but you know, residual things happen, it goes in cycles, so, you know, once you love someone, they're like stuck for you for life, so you have to like deal, like, you have to deal with how you process them because they're going to be a part of you forever. Um, even if you decided to, like, physically move on from them, like, exes are always in our hearts, right? So, whoever this person was, it's left you feeling bitter. And remember the qualities, the shadow qualities that were in this Pisces. I want you to, th want you to think about this person who hurt you and the qualities that they have. These are, like, the risks, the... Um, risk assessment that you're stepping into things with. So think of the things that hurt you with this person, like I'll just do one thing um, or one or two things. So like first thing is, you know, deception, not knowing the rules. So you're going to take your relationship to the next level or go into new relationships from now on if you decide to be single um saying like because you came from this deception you're going to state clearly to your partner i will not tolerate dishonesty and i am not going to play games so i want this relationship to be honest and without motive and that's going to be part of your foundation and I also think in this process if you are taking your relationship to the next level part of this is finding the things you are grateful about the things that add value the things that have a firm foundation and be grateful for them in your current partner because you know, this is like grass is always greener, but you have like a perfect lawn type of card. So whatever you have is like at the current moment is actually wonderful. But it's not good enough for you because you're worried about this past. So the way to get over that is to find out what's triggering this past and like circumvent it in an opposite way. So, um, so finding the opposite of what disappoints you and being grateful about what pleases you. And this upset, it hurts now, but you know, it's an opportunity to make things right in this relationship, to make this relationship better if you're taking it to the next level it's an opportunity to you know kind of get right you know maybe you went into a relationship without very many rules and there's been some heartache and this is the time to kind of set ground rules and set boundaries so part of that is you know this reassessment of the past um to figure out what rules you even want and this heal the ouch I remember it saying something about um, your like forgiving yourself um, and I think part of this assessment you will have to determine and part of like taking rest so you're resting and part of this assessment part of this rest is evaluating like how you could have done things better so that you didn't get hurt I personal responsibility for your hurt in this your disrupt in this and creating a foundation for that other person and saying something like 
like moving to a place, moving ahead to a place of, you know, I will no longer compare you to my ex, or I will, like, I, I'm getting, like, vows, and like I said, this is a marriage card, so if it is, if you are getting married, then maybe you're, like, um, if you're engaged to be married, you know, maybe there's some, like, cold feet issues, um, because you're thinking of all your past, and you're wondering, like, is it gonna work? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Um, and so it might be, like, writing your vows, because you're reassessing your past, and you're thinking of what you want in your future, what, um, like lines in the sand are going to be made, what foundations are going to be made moving forward. And part of that is like making a promise about what you have done, or making like, you know, perhaps even apologies about what you've done and promises going forward, or, you know, making a commitment to yourself and to another person to, you know, we're human, so you got to forgive yourself, don't beat yourself up about it, and you got to forgive all parties involved, your exes and your current, um, heartache. Hello. Get down, please. My dog is, um, she's about to bark. So, um, I forgot where I was. But I think that is pretty much it for Cancers, although I did want to get a little more clarification on the Stingy card and the Sulky card. Alright, Cancer, Cancer, tell me more about the Cups and the... Page of Swords, Orphan Child, Decision, and Ten of Staves. So, what's leaving you stingy and sulky is the Page of Staves reversed is like little orphan child. They feel like they have to defend themselves all the time. Like, they're alone in this world. Like, don't bother, I'll just do it myself. And that could be like, you know, that hard shell you put up. Um, and it does make you like stingy and ungrateful. So, you know, it's it talks about a child who's had to learn some like hard truths early on. And so, you know, they've had to like, get this like thick skin early on and it's like you can't do it good enough for me I'll just do it myself so um, it could be like um, staying single in or like you know it's kind of like this it's like well, I'm going to get heartbroken anyway. But it's like putting a defense up. I used to see the tower as like all the walls that I built for myself, you know? Like self-preservation type stuff. And then like vulnerability showing through. So, Page of Swords is like getting tough after being hurt. Two of Swords is a decision that needs to be made. Ten of Staves is a burden. So, you're burdened by this choice. And I think the choice, from all accounts, is moving into love that has firmer foundations. Forgiveness. Gratitude. So yeah, it was a pretty good reading, Cancer. I think that's all I really have to say. Um, 